Good day, everyone. This is Eric Maxwell with Clean Slate Technology Group, and thank you for joining another uh, one of our uh, webinars around uh, subcapacity licensing reporting in an ILMT version 9 upgrade. Also, co going to cover today what you need to know about ILMT version 9 uh, from you know upgrading from version 7, or even we're going to cover CAD for D as well. Now, at Clean Slate, we do host a series of free webinars uh, for our customers or clients who are curious about exploring topics like the IBM license metric tool or its big brother, Big Fix, or Big Fix Inventory, and other complex IT subjects. Since the landscape of technology is consistently changing, our webinars are, geared, are really a great way to help you uh, stay up to date with the latest and greatest tech trends and, and everything you need to know about our industry. Uh, please feel free to check back our, web, uh, our website, I guess I should say, at www. Uh, cleanslatetg.com. We do post webinar schedules and videos regularly to be sure to check them out on our website. Now before beginning I do want to let you know uh, as we go through this I'll, I'll be covering uh, really the first part uh, talking a little bit about um, I'll give you an overview of Clean Slate Technology Group um, you know who we are and what we do. Um, I'll then turn it over to uh, Bay Van Horn. Um, Bay is our, um, our software asset management project practice lead and project lead. Uh, he'll cover uh, various topics about uh, some of the differences between version 7, version 9, uh, how to upgrade, uh, why, to, why to migrate uh, in some cases, some data, um, cover the deployment architecture in uh, ILMT challenges. Uh, and, and really the migration path. He will then turn it over to uh, Anna Pullman, uh, who is our uh, Big Fix and ILMT uh, solutions architect, who will go through a, a brief live demo. And then I'll, I'll uh, take us home with uh, some of our Clean Slate Technology Group's uh, ILMT deployment services, uh, software asset management strategies, uh, and some of our ongoing uh, uh, tricks of the trade to, to keep you compliant and give, give you an effective SAM strategy. So who is CleanSight Technology? Uh, we are a premier uh, IBM business partner that provides a dedicated practice uh, focus on the delivery of IBM software solutions and professional services. Uh, we have been in business um, going on 17 years, and our company is really divided into uh, to two, uh, to two business units. We have our software services. Uh, our only focus is on IBM software. It's, it's our niche and what we've, uh, how we, 17 years ago, what we started on. Uh, we were last year IBM's uh, third largest net new reseller in North America. Uh, we do carry over 60 IBM sales and technical certifications and can certainly sell the full stack of IBM software solutions. Um, so bottom line, we understand IBM's complex licensing metrics better than anyone. It's, it's all we've, do, we've been doing for uh, going on 17 years. Uh, we also have a, a very established and accomplished professional services practice. Um, based around uh, several IBM um, solu uh, software solutions. Um, so our, our skills do span across the majority of IBM software brand portfolio. Of course, part of that is our uh, dedicated asset management practice uh, that we support our software team and customers with, and our software customers with, that's us, that SAM practice. And we are recognized by IBM as the leader or go-to partner in IBM software asset management uh, focusing on um, implementation, configuration, um, and ongoing managed services of the environment. So one big difference we'll start off with is uh, IBM BigFix. Some may be familiar with it. Um, if not, this is the uh, new platform that ILMT version 9 is now built on. Uh, BigFix is a, is a, a, a pretty... Uh, uh, it's a solution with several other modules beyond uh, uh, the asset management piece. So it's a really a robust tool um, that most customers are adopting there to, to focus on uh, multiple business units, IT operations, IT security, um, and ultimately uh, with the new platform uh, powered by Big Fix, it is a policy-driven agent solution that's been in the marketplace for nearly 20 years. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with it, you know it's a Gardner Magic Quadrant uh, leader for client management tools. Uh, it's going to allow real-time discovery of assets and also allow you to set policy management for all assets online and offline. Now, moving on, I will kick it over to uh, Bay Van Horn, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about some of the differences between ILMT uh, version 7 and version 9 and the architecture. Thank you, Eric. 
So folks, glad to have you aboard today. The slide we're looking at now, wide upgrade to version nine, it's simply the, the most key part to this is your version seven tool is going out of support. Notice the bottom left hand corner. Version 7.2.2, if you are on that, uh, went out of support in 2016. Version 7.5 is supported, I believe, until the end of April 2017. If you're running prior to version 7.2.1 or 7.2.2, you've been out of support for quite some time. Um, that also, on a side note, violates the agreement you have with IBM subcapacity licensing on the Passport Advantage site, which uh, suggests that you should be maintaining currency on the product. Set that aside, folks. Anybody that's used version 7.5 have always wanted more. The ability to create reports, the ability to see data that's collected that's not displayed, the ability to look at the catalog, the ability to do more with the data that's being collected. The version 9 tool is far more robust in reporting. You are able to create custom reports, see more of the data that helps you substantiate the licensing numbers that are calculated, so forth and so on. The next bullet, the uh, enhanced dashboard, trying to determine the health, trying to do problem determination, on a failing IOMT uh, infrastructure has always been a challenge. It's far more robust in version 9. Version 9 is also far more scalable. We'll get into an architecture slide a little bit further down. But rest assured, version 7 had a scaling limit of around 25,000 endpoints. Version 9 can exceed 200,000 endpoints. Next. Um, so second part or follow-up part to the reasons for upgrade. I think the key thing here is probably on the right side, audit reporting. One, another one of the key things out of version 7 that has always been asked for is the ability to track who did what within the tool, who bundled what, who excluded what, who did something to influence the numbers? There is audit reporting, audit tracking uh, within version 9 that does not exist in version 7. Down on the bottom, performance. I've already told you that this is a far more scalable product, far more stable product. Uh, version 7 ran on a very heavy WebSphere platform. Version 9 is a far lighter platform, making it a little bit more nimble, far more responsive. To the bottom left, interesting uh, aside, the display of the catalog. One of the big questions in version 7 was, what's capable of being discovered? What was used to trigger the discovery of inventory software? These are the things that version 9 brings you. When to migrate? Well, this is probably a few answers to this. <coughs> Obviously, there's a deadline of April 2017 that you need to attend to. After that, at the very best, um, IBM is going to stop publishing a version 7.5 catalog, which means, amongst other things, if you continue to deploy new bleeding edge software, you're going to begin to have a lack of discovery. The second question on when to migrate or when to install new would be this. Have you been using your version 7.5 tool? Is the quality of data in version 7.5 worth saving or not? And you look at this, we have two columns there. When to consider a migration effort, when to consider a clean install. If I have garbage in version 7.5, I probably don't want to migrate that garbage. I will start with a clean install. Even if you start with a clean install, folks, just from a 
audit protection perspective, capture your old reports, archive them, save soft copies so you can prove to IBM that you have been running IOMT with or without effective usage or not. But if you have been using version 7 effectively, you've been doing your bundle and the reporting coming out of version 7 has been of value, you are comfortable with the numbers, you are a large shop, you will want to consider the migration. Now, we seem to use the word migration here quite a bit, but let's be real clear about this. As Eric mentioned on one of the prior slides, ILMT version 9, Big Fix version 9, run on a Big Fix platform. This is totally different infrastructure. So folks, when we talk about a migration, it's a rip and replace of the infrastructure, but it's a migration of the knowledge that you put into version 7.5. By that, I mean primarily the bundling and exclusion data that brings you to a clean subcapacity report. Um, the director exclusions, the VM manager connections, that type of thing. This slide is a, a nice little graphical, if you will, trying to compare the version 7 and version 9 products. You'll notice four columns there. The first two are big fix inventory slash sewer or software use analysis. You might hear either term. That is the upgrade product from Tivoli Asset Discovery for distributed or TAD for D. That's chargeable. That's a multi-vendor product. I'll come back to make a few comments on that in a second. The second column is the version 9 no charge IOMT product. Third column is your version 7 IOMT product and the, then the last column is your TAD for D product. Some of the key differences here is scalability. About two-thirds of the way down you um, see an architecture. Uh, the version 9 is in-tiered or multi-tiered. The version 7 is uh, just a two-tiered product. And a couple of rows below that you see the scaling factor and I've mentioned this before. Version 9 can accommodate 200 plus thousand, 250,000 endpoints. Version 7 started showing stress around uh, 20,000. I think the uh, documented uh, level was 45,000, but that would have been a, a stretch objective. The key down on the bottom are the last two lines of difference. In addition to a whole lot of new deep uh, information that's always been collected and being displayed, the last two lines are, are new feature functionality, if you will. Version 9 of Big Fix Inventory uh, allows for contract management. That's the second to the last row, and there is a, a typo on this slide, by the way. Big Fix Inventory has contract management. I, ILMT version 9 does not, even though the slide indicates it does. What we mean by contract management is simply this. I have the ability to put in, if you will, entitlement information. Here's my product, here's my entitlement quantity, here are my purchase dates, my maintenance dates, so forth and so on. And it will do limited variance reporting. Remember that the core to these products is to do discovery. Now in Big Fix Inventory, I have this limited contracts module. So I can begin to see over consumption within this tool without having to escape to another tool. The perhaps most interesting is that last line item, the ISO 19770-4 tags or the uh, consumption tags. The ILMT and Big Fix Inventory Tad for D tools have always been based upon the ability to discover something in the presence of software being installed. installed. The Dash 4 tag, the ISO Dash 4 tag, is a standard that allows software vendors to instrument software to put out a software discovery tag file to track things like user-based files, floating user, auth user, concurrent user, some of those other one-off IBM RVU metrics, number of endpoints managed, so forth and so on. 
Version 9 is capable of reporting on pretty much any licensing metric right now that might be driven by that dash 4 tag or the ISO tag files. The product comparisons between 7 and 9, the, the key here, I think, are probably that third or that fourth item, endpoints run codes fixlets. I'll talk to the rest of them, but uh, the key here is this. Eric started talking a little bit ago about this big fix platform. Version 7 did one thing and one thing only. It collected hardware and software information enough to generate an IBM subcapacity report. That's what its sole purpose in life was. Version 9 is a business process, set of business processes that can run on this big fix inventory platform, which we'll delve into a little bit more on the architecture slide. And those endpoints are intelligent in the sense that they can run anything that they are told to, told to run. That's the codes or fixlets, scripts, programs, so forth and so on. Um, some of the things that Eric was alluding to before, that means that the same endpoint that we're going to use for ILMT or Big Fix Inventory can do patching, can do software upgrades, can do um, compliance in the sense that we want to make sure that there are not rogue installs um, or of malicious software and that type of thing. All of these are different business processes that can run on these endpoints. Each of those supply a different set of codes and fixlets. Again, I've talked about the scalability and performance. The second item, the database is substantially hidden. One of the things that uh, we commonly did in version 7 was have people run a lot of SQL to extract data because, frankly, the version 7 console was cumbersome, clumsy, and um, did a poor job of exposing all the data. There is a REST API that certainly makes it easier to extract the data for import or blending into other tools, but more importantly, there's just so much more data available natively in the ILMT console. Um, some more things, the software catalog features. You have the ability to actually look at the catalog in version 9. You can see what is discoverable. In version 7, you had a problem if ILMT said, I uh, discovered MQ. And the MQ guy coming back and says, no, it's not on that system. You had a hard time trying to figure out what it was that ILMT used for that discovery. That information is now exposed in the ILMT console. Uh, you have the ability to extend your session timeouts. One of the problems we've always had is you walk away or blink on version 7 and your console's locked up and you have to uh, log back in. Well, you can set a session timeout effectively to all day long if you want to. You have the ability, as I said, to track changes, the audit trail. There's an interesting one, the inline fixlets and corrections. One of the problems that we've had with ILMT version 7 is dealing with two or three variants of a theme here. What happens if you run in a cloud environment, in AWS, or an Azure environment, or something like that? Those are effectively Intel-based virtual environments. We have typically wanted you to connect to the vCenter or the Hyper-V manager that's and you can't do that. So, in version 9, you have the ability to essentially say, this host should be rated at this PVU rating. So you can fill in the gaps of that missing data that you never had a chance to procure or secure in version 7. Uh, finally, the activities. All these are done through a second console, a big fix root console. Um, so there are some subtle mechanical differences in how you do things between 7 and 9. This is the version 9 menu. Number one, it's far more colorful. 
we'll call it the Martha Stewart version of IOMT. If you look, we now have lots of widgets. The first row, the first uh, three there, are effectively replacing those three green bars that you saw, or four green bars that you saw on the IOMT version 7 screen. There are hyperlinks on each of these that take you to documentation or filtered lists of agent problems, so forth and so on. Uh, there's a pop-up box that shows you uh, the different reports that are available. Um, a lot of those reports correlate directly to what you saw on version 7 with more information. For instance, in version 7 you had a processor's report. That would be the same as our hardware inventory report. But we now provide you things like uh, subpooling information. Uh, entitlement uh, versus uh, max CPU information. All these little hardware things that were requisite for calculating a PPU subcapacity. If you look at the bottom left, you see a heading at the very bottom called software catalog. That's my entry into what does I be, what can IBM discover? How does it discover it? What are the signatures, if you will, for use of discovery. This is the architecture. Now, this is the version 7.5 architecture. We won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but you had your DB2 database and you had a WebSphere application server and lots of agents. A very flat architecture. This is a version 9 architecture. Looks a little more complex, but it's actually quite a bit easier to maintain and simpler to maintain. That high level, number one, if you will, is one of two things. It's either a Linux application with a DB2 instance, or it's a Windows-based application with a SQL Server instance. But either way, the application is your license reporting server, whether that's IBM license metric tool, which replaces IMT, obviously, or Big Fix inventory, which replaces TAD for D. That is your reporting server. Uh, the second tier is your Big Fix base server. Again, remember that ILMT or Big Fix inventory is only one of a number of things that can run on the Big Fix platform. So there is a Big Fix server to house and manage the content for all of the things that the Big Fix infrastructure can run. Again, the Big Fix server runs on either Red Hat Linux or Windows. If it's a Linux uh, app server, it's a DB2 database. If it's a Windows app server, it's a SQL Server database. And then you have endpoints. That's the third level. What's kind of missing, if you will, for extremely large environments between the second and third tiers are things called relays. Relays are nothing more than store and forward devices, but it provides that scalability of up to 250 plus thousand endpoints. So let's pick up on the deployment options. There are two basic deployment options here. One is you house the entire infrastructure on your own premises, on-prem. That means the ILMT server, the Big Fix server, the databases are all being hosted by your company. A second option would be an off-prem or where Clean Slate would host the Big Fix and ILMT servers in an AWS environment, uh, your infrastructure would connect to that. We end up managing the ILMT and Big Fix server infrastructures for you from that, because of the nature of the Big Fix environment, we can also upgrade agents um, if that fits within your change control process. That takes the maintenance of the Big Fix environment off your hands for quite some effort. Now, the, I do want to point out one other deployment option here that uh, multinational companies should be aware of. If you remember version 7 and you had operations in the Americas, 
EMEA and Asia Pack. You were required to stand up three island tea silos. There was something called a report groups option as well for those of you that had sub-enterprise reporting. From a deployment skip, uh, option or from a deployment uh, architecture, you have the ability to install a single big fix server, single IOMT server, and run worldwide collection into a single server. The concept of doing sub-enterprise reporting, i.e. what was known as report groups in IOMT version 7, is easily managed, easily done, entirely through the ILMT or Big Fix inventory consoles. There is no longer a need to run batch scripts and that type of thing. So, these are your requirements for the Big Fix server. I would suggest that you contact CleanSlate. We have a very thorough document on prereqs of hardware, of software, and that type of thing, both for the Windows uh, based server solutions and the Linux based server solutions. Essentially, looking at this, you have Windows or Red Hat Linux, Red Hat Linux, no other versions of Linux, and on Red Hat Linux, you are restricted to specific versions. Uh, for the Big Fix server, you can be running version 5, 6, or 7 of Red Hat. For Windows, you see you have to be at 2008 or higher. IMMT server does have to be on Red Hat 6.3 or 7, and you see the Windows environments. The other comment that I will make on this slide is, if you use the Red Hat Linux solution, the DB2 license is provided for you for free. It is included within the license. The DB2, by the way, that's running or shipped with um, IOMT and Big Fix is Workgroup Edition, that's DB2 WSE 10.5. If you choose to run a Windows solution and you're running SQL Server, the SQL Server license is not provided with the IOMT or Big Fix platform. That is something you would secure on your own. If you happen to be running 500 endpoints or less, you can use SQL Server Express. There's no charge for that. But if you're running more than 500 endpoints, then you are looking at a SQL Server license that will cost something. It does not need to be an enterprise license. It could be a standard license. But that SQL Server license would be something that would be on you as a customer to obtain. The last note that I'll put down on the bottom there, supporting operating systems for agents. You will notice uh, the second line, not available for i5 OS. A slight caveat there. There is no steady state agent for i5. That's the AS400s or i-series. Um, where there was one for version 7.5, there is not in version 9. They run what's called a standalone agent, where you would run the agent, say, once a month, harvest the results, and pull it into the ILMT server. The concept of a standalone agent is something that is a carryover from your uh, version 7. The second note that I will make there is on the Windows AI, X, Linux, Z, Linux, so forth and so on, up there. Not that it matters a whole lot for IMMT and IBM licensing, but um, Big Fix also supports your Apple uh, OS. So if you were using Big Fix inventory and you were looking at a broader based software solution and you happen to be a company that is adopting an Apple device as a option for standard laptops, be aware that Iowan, or that uh, the Big Fix platform does support Apple device. And finally, as we get into the demo, which is about to follow, just a high level view of the movement from version 7 to version 9, i.e., the migration. Remember that version 9 is a brand new infrastructure. We have to pre 
prepare the environment. That means provision a couple of VMs, so forth and so on. You have to deploy the version 9 environment, so forth and so on. You will be, at that point in time, having two agents on each endpoint. The agents themselves are not high resource consumers, but each agent is capable of running a software scan, so we do need to be cognizant of making sure that we're not doing redundant scanning. We prepare the version 9 environment, we run initial scans on the version 9 environment, we run final scans on the version 7.5 environment. There's a mapping that occurs within the BigFix console to map the version 7.5 agents to the version 9 agents. Uh, we've talked about scanning the version 9 environment. We do have to do an initial scan. We need to migrate the relevant content by that. I mean uh, bringing over the vCenter VMware Hyper-V definitions from version 7 to version 9 so you don't have to re-enter them. Bringing over the directory exclusions so you don't have to re-enter them. And bringing over, most importantly, all those bundling decisions and exclusion decisions that you made in 7.5, bring those over to version 9. That's the migrate the relevant content. And you will see that there is a simulate migration option there. So you can run this, what happened, what would happen if I ran the migration of the bundling? What would occur? Um, so the process there is we extract data out of version 7.5. These scripts are provided for you as a part of the version 9 install. You extract the data out of version 7.5 and then you run the script again to post it into version 9. Again, either in a simulate or a real-time mode. Now essentially on the bundling and uh, exclusions, what gets migrated is that content from 7.5 for those agents that still exist. And I say that because remember that IOMT is historical data. It contains things going back a couple of years. You have content for agents that no longer exist in your 7.5 database. That data will not get migrated. Just that data, bundling data, inventory data for those agents that still exist. We've migrated. We've done our posting, so to speak. Now we want to validate it. Now that could be as simple as taking a look at, say, a current day's report out of version 7.5 against the same time frame in version 9 and look at the numbers from a product level perspective. Are they correct or not? If not, then you would likely dig into the details to find out where there are differences. When the migration is going on, there are migration logs that come out. That's the migration status. We can verify all of the uh, information that comes out and do some troubleshooting. There is a best practice document available with this that we can certainly supply upon request. Reach out to Queen Slate. We're more than happy to provide that for you. Once you have a functional and agreeable version 9 environment, then the last thing to do is to wrap up and decommission the 7.5 environment. I've made this statement already. Take soft copies of your your report's going back two years, and then you can remove the ILMT 7.5 server and all the agents. Here's an interesting aside. Because of the capabilities of the Big Fix infrastructure, you could conceivably use the Big Fix infrastructure that you've just deployed to remove all the agents and the ILMT 7.5 server. With that, we'll now turn the program over to Anna Pullman uh, for a demo of the IOMT version 9 environment so you can get a look and feel for that. And then once that's done, we'll follow up with Eric coming back on to provide some service details and the like that Clean Slate can provide you as a company. Okay, Bay, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. My name again is Anna Pullman. I am a technical associate consultant here at Clean Slate, and I am tasked with the installation, deployment, um, and MSO management of the Big Fix and ILMT products for our customers. As Bay discussed, um, the Big Fix architecture, uh, I just want to give you kind of an idea what the Big Fix uh, administration console looks like and also the ILMT administration console. 
Um, this is a very small environment, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on Big Fix because there's a lot um, that can be applied here. But once you get into Big Fix management in the, in the console, um, the console is a fat client that does get installed onto your workstation, and you can use your LDAP authentication uh, along with that um, if you so desire. But once you get into Big Fix, uh, there is a module for the license reporting that can be enabled, allowing you to download, install, and configure the ILMT component. Once that's installed, um, there are already pre-canned fixlets and tasks uh, waiting for you to be able to um, configure your software scans, um, your capacity scans on your systems, and do the proper reporting uh, for ILMT to be able to pull that content in. The machines that are available here are the ones that the Big Fix agent has been installed on. So you'll install the Big Fix agent solely on those systems that require PVU license reporting. Once those agents are installed, you'll be able to see them, manage them, um, and then run these tasks against them. So there are several tasks here. I'll just kind of walk through this a little bit. Um, there's a uh, that also allows you to. Um, not only initiate those scans and run those scans, but troubleshoot them as well. So they have a lot of pre-canned content here that you can um, utilize to do that proper reporting. Once these tasks are ran against those systems, then that data is imported into the Big Fix databases. And then later, um, you're able to import that content into ILMT to run the appropriate uh, reporting and calculations that ILMT does for you to create your audit report. When we go over to the ILMT administration console, this is where the magic happens for uh, your license reporting. Um, the first part of logging into ILMT is you're able to see the dashboard. The dashboard gives you an idea of what's going on, the health and content, to assure that your reporting is going to be done properly. It provides a quick outlook of your deployment health if the systems are not reporting properly or they are low on disk space, uh, missing some prerequisites. Um, the scan health is allowing you to see which scans are failing on what systems, if they're missing their upload. Um, and there's a software catalog that does get updated once a month. And if that catalog is out of date, that could skew your reporting. So it allows you to see which catalogs um, may be out of date on which systems. But as you can see, there's a bar here in this particular uh, widget. That would mean that that's something you need to address. If you do not see bars in that widget, that means things are probably running OK. So once you see something, it's usually uh, you can click on that particular item, learn a little bit more about that system, and then you can in divulge uh, a little bit more time and effort into maybe what's going on with that particular um, entry. The last widget here on the top is about the virtual managers. There's also the necess necessity of connecting your ILMT environment into your virtual hosts, your vCenters, your Hyper-Vs. Um, it creates a connectivity, pulls read-only type information from those systems to allow you to get the right capacity calculations, again, to do your license reporting. If you have bars here, these, these are a little bit more important to really uh, dive into and, and invest some time in figuring out what's going on here. Um, these are configurable um, by going up into the management section and going over here to VM managers. Here's where you would create those connect, connections to your um, vCenters or Hyper-Vs, um, even your KVMs, KVMs um, allows you to create those connections. Again, it's a read-only connection. It goes out and captures that information, pulls it back, uh, and again, does the right calculations um, to do your audit reporting. The remaining three widgets are really all about what content and information is being captured, which software components are being identified um, in those software scans. A lot of your uh, time will be spent here in the bundling section, section especially at first. Um, it'll take some uh, knowledge of your, um, maybe your system administrators, your business people, your software asset um, managers to kind of divulge and go walk through these. I know a little bit about your licensing, know a little bit how it's deployed. Um, ILMT does a really good job at identifying what packages and software components are on there. 
but it really kind of relies on you to determine which components really need to be worked together or combined together. For example, if you buy WebSphere and it comes with the component of DB2, you may need to bundle those products together to be under one license. This will only identify that those components exist on that system. So a lot of time is spent here. Um, a lot of times at Clean Slate, we typically say that this might take longer than the actual technical implementation, depending on how many components um, that you and systems you might have. You do want to get this right. This is the part that you do really want to make sure that your um, audit report is reflected properly. Once you're done with this bundling, you're able to do the reports um, and pull an initial audit report. Um, you do want to look at this again. You do want to evaluate, see what it looks like, run that snapshot, and make sure it's accurate, um, and, and just validate the system before you store it and save it for yourself. This usually requires to be run uh, once a quarter and then saved off for IBM to look at on a right, you know, if they request it. So the last little piece I kind of want to cover here, um, I mentioned that uh, in Big Fix, the Big Fix uh, tasks go out and run several tasks um, and store that content, that software scan data into its database. And then we import that into ILMT. Uh, here's the section where that, that magic happens and it pulls that content into ILMT to, be, to run through its calculations. And then there's also the ability to then out from here import your software catalog. And I, I kind of want to run that home a little bit. Um, just want to make sure that users know or our customers know that um, this system is not a uh, configure once and leave, let it run kind of system. Uh, a lot of our technologies are changing, your environment's changing and evolving. And want to make sure that um, this software catalog is up to date, um, that your PBU tables are up to date, and that's just to assure that you're going to get the, uh, the most accurate reporting possible um, for, for your auto report. So I'll kind of leave it there. I'll let Eric kind of continue on with our webinar. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, tap into us and uh, hope to, hopefully we'll be talking to you later. Have a good day. Thanks, Anna, and, and thank you, Bay, for uh, a very insightful uh, walkthrough of, of what goes into uh, the new uh, ILMT platform and, and best practices moving from uh, version seven to nine. I um, want to wanna talk to everyone, as I said at the onset of uh, this webinar, we are IBM's uh, leader and go-to partner uh, for uh, IBM software asset management, and um, here's some of our deployment services. Now, as a certified partner, uh, Clean Slate SAM experts can certainly help you deploy and manage a comprehensive SAM strategy, um, really complete with installation of the IBM license metric tool. So no, no matter where you are in your SAM process, if, if it's non-existent, if you're uh, you know, very experienced. Um, we, we really work with customers all over the board here. Uh, here's to give you a little bit of an idea of some of our most popular offerings uh, with IOMT deployment services that we could provide you. Um, right off the bat, it's a quick start. Um, if, you're, if you're new to IOMT or doing the migration, essentially we would kind of do the, do the entry level or the, the beginner stuff of this. We do the server install and, and take uh, uh, maybe a handful of agents, almost a, a POC of the sort, and maybe a handful of products uh, and provide knowledge transfer, then to turn the reins over uh, to you to, to complete the remainder of your uh, product portfolio and, uh, and the remainder of the environment. Uh, we certainly do health checks, um, very popular if you already have the tool uh, in working order or, or you think in working order, um, we would uh, take some time to do an overall deployment health assessment of the server environment agents, uh, make sure that uh, what's, what's being reporting, um, the reports you have are matching with your entitlements, if there's any discrepancies there, locating those, any tuning recommendations we could certainly help with, um, and that kind of leads into that deployment tuning in the blue box here, or the blue circle I should say, uh, that's where we're going to essentially make uh, essentially ensure that your your uh, environment's as healthy as possible um, and it's reporting accurately. Uh, number three is probably the most 
uh, the most uh, popular or the most gives the customers the most challenge, and that's the bundling and reporting. Uh, as Bing mentioned, um, with uh, your if you have, if you have version seven or Tad D now, and, and you're not confident in the reports, um, or you're, you're yeah, you're producing reports, but it's you're not matching those with the entitlements, kind of the garbage in, garbage garbage out scenario. Um, this is certainly something we can help with. Um, we can we can show you the best practices to bundle, take a look at your software solution, let you know kind of the trouble uh, the trouble products that have several things bundled within and packaged within that particular solution. Uh, also, uh, you know the reporting aspect. Uh, part of you, most most folks on here are doing this as as a result of uh, uh, you know um, uh, compliance reasons and um, you know validating have a validated baseline and an audit report uh, is definitely key to, to having a starting point with software asset management. And of course, we could provide knowledge transfer with that. Uh, one of our most popular is the managed service offering. Uh, I'll tell you, most most of the time when, when we get brought in to, to assist with uh, you know any number of these uh, uh, in the engagement models here, um, it's really just to get the tool up and running. Uh, we found that uh, the managed service offering really is the is almost the secret sauce to maintaining uh, compliance and and really having line of sight to your license position. Uh, and that's a service that uh, that's really twofold. There's the uh, platform management where uh, we'll manage the day-to-day, month-to-month uh, software update packages uh, or p- patches, I should say, um, with with the IOMT environment. If you have any server new servers uh, or new software um, purchases or any other products you're using. Uh, once that baseline is established, we'll factor that all in. Ultimately, producing uh, that quarterly report um, on that uh, or semi-annual, whatever your reporting requirements uh, may be, and uh, we can produce that that report with you. Make sure uh, to compare that with your entitlements, identify any coverage gaps, or if you're, um, you know, essentially renewing software or that anniversary date and, and uh, comes up, and you see that you're you've been renewing more than you actually are, are using there. We can certainly. Um, you know, produce that report to allow you make to allow you to make an educated uh, purchasing decision um, around that renewal or anniversary time as well. Uh, so those are just a few of the a la carte options we have. Of course, um, we do have a full package deployment, steady state planning. Um, we do you know everything from pillar to post and all these in between. Uh, goal being to produce that that quarterly report and get the IOMT environment going into uh, the right direction. So as a, as a thank you for joining the call, if you're you know in the between here where uh, let's say you've you've you, maybe you've you're on seven five, you haven't migrated, you're on seven two even, and you didn't migrate to nine yet, tad for D, um, we we will do a, a as Clean Safer Technology Group, we'll do a free audit readiness assessment, um, and what this is is essentially is an offering that's going to include um, you know we'll we'll talk to you about some of the current challenges and opportunities. Uh, that you have with your current environment. If there is an opportunity to, to migrate some of the bundled data over, we can identify that really quickly and let you know. Uh, we can help you review your current entitlements, uh, review your most recent audit report. Uh, if you've been producing those but have no idea if it's accurate or you think it is and would like a second pair of eyes, uh, we can certainly help with that. And um, review any current deployment architecture. If you're out of trouble where you, you're you're finding some missing uh, missing data or not everything's reporting back, we can certainly take a look at that and then ultimately provide you with a high level assessment and recommendation. So almost a finding recommendation of that uh, of that health assessment too. So we certainly can offer that to anyone on the call if you wish. Uh, I do want to thank you again uh, for joining uh, another one of our webinar installments here. Again, feel free to check back with us at uh, www.cleanslatetg.com for future, uh, future webinars as we're going to be ha- having these on a monthly basis. Uh, again, I'm Eric Maxwell. Uh, I do want to thank Bay Van Horn and Anna Pullman. And uh, feel free to reach out uh, to me. My contact info- information is there with any questions. Uh, we will also be providing this deck um, as a follow-up on the, uh, uh, to your attendance on this call. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.